Okay, good day, good day to everybody. It's yours truly, it's Yeshua Sampson of West Coast Rise Ministries. You already know who I am. I already told you who I was. I know it's been a while since I uh, tuned in on YouTube, since I've sent the video or I've given you all any updates. Um, a lot has transpired. The Lord has been shifting me and moving me in various directions and uh, everything is starting to come together now. And I'm just uh, glory to God first and foremost. And I just wanted to share a quick little voice, uh, a, a video memo of something that just came to my, uh, my mind right now, to my spirit. Because as you all know, uh, Africa is the new Jerusalem. So I've been pushing that movement and I've been speaking with uh, a group on YouTube, uh, on WhatsApp. And the group is called uh, the Repat. The Repat. Uh, it's like a Repat podcast by uh, you know this brother that's in uh, Uganda, Uganda and Rwanda, and uh, they have opened up a platform uh, for people to share uh, ideas and to share thoughts and and history and and history about African ancestry and who we are and where we come from. So I noticed that there's a lot of information going on out there. There's a lot of scholars and Hebrew scholars and Israelite scholars and just so much information is coming to us right now. And everybody's just so excited to share all of this, this information, this new information that we're learning on our own through self-discovery. So it's a blessing and glory to God for that, for these prophetic times that we are living in. And I just wanted to uh, give an update. So Africa, uh, we have various leaders, uh, Professor Pio Lola Mumba, happy birthday. Um, by now, President William Ruto, uh, His Excellency of Kenya should have received my letter right now uh, in the mail that I've sent from, Cal from Washington actually. So right now, that's the reason why I'm shooting this video is because to give you all some updates because uh, you know, I had to really just take the gas, my foot off the gas for a little bit and go away, step, step back from social media for a minute because I did something really big uh, when, when I sent that letter to President William Ruto and, uh, and to also Bishop T.D. Jakes. So I'm just letting the Lord work with that. And uh, so I had something on my mind that I should have shared that it just slipped my mind right now uh, because I just wanted to give you all some updates on what's been going on. Um, the Africa movement is still going. Uh, the New Jerusalem of Africa, uh, that movement is still happening. So uh, I noticed that a lot of us are focusing our efforts on Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, all the nice places, right? All the rich and land places that we're most familiar with, but there are other uh, countries in on the continent of Africa uh, that we should hone in on. We shouldn't just focus on one particular area, but we should bridge the gap between all uh, countries, especially since we have excellencies and uh, they're advocating right now in breaking down the borders. So we need to be prepared to cross train and, and trade uh, all across the board. So just let's open up our minds to expanding um, our horizons and our territory in the, on the continent of Africa. Um, I don't believe in the term of uh, Pan-Africanism -Afri because uh, Pan-Africanism is too vague. You know, it didn't work in the past with Marcus Garvey, uh, Kwame Nkrumah. It didn't work. You know, God bless them and thank you for the seeds that they planted. But this is a new generation. We have technology. We have all of these uh, resources and we have more education and tools and knowledge under our belt that's prophetic so we don't necessarily we didn't know who we were back then uh, during the pan-african movement and when it first developed and so many people that have been involved in that pan-african movement it has been watered down similar to the NAACP so every organization and every movement that we try to start uh, to empower uh, our people it, it becomes watered down so uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about building the new Jerusalem in Africa. Let's plant that seed. We know who we are. We're Hebrew Israelites. There's so much debate and scholars uh, and, and they're and it's starting to turn into Pharisees. We're starting to turn into Pharisees. I'm noticing 
uh, but we are the children of Israel. There's no, it's clear cut and dry, point blank. The word of God says that's who we are and, uh, and that's who we're gonna be. We're not Africans, we're not African Americans. The Bible never said that's who we are. He, God never said he had a covenant with Africans, with African Americans. He said the children of Israel. He said all the tribes of all the children of Israel. And uh, I'm not gonna even speak that. I'm gonna read it to you out of the King James Version. So you can hear for yourself what prophetic times we're living in right now, where exactly we're at, and why you're seeing the weather changes and everything that's going on on all four corners of the earth. So, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, beloved, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Revelations chapter seven, verse two. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the, the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then it breaks down all the tribes, Judah, Reuben, Aser, Nephilim, Manassas, Issachar, Zabilon, Joseph, Benjamin. Okay, so this is what we have to pay attention to, the children of Israel. So we know who we are. We know where the children of Israel and we've been scattered all across the world. I know you all have knowledge, wisdom and understanding. But brothers, we got to stop all this talking and this rhetoric and debating about scholar and history. Let's move forward. We know what our history is. We have too many chiefs, too many teachers, too many people with masters and PhDs, too many teachers out here too many scholars it's time to put all that education that's the thing about education you get so much education and then you sit behind these computer screens and you're just typing away typing away and you're sharing all of these notes with everybody and i see it but we gotta change the dialogue it's time to start doing taking action and uh, many of us are not in a financial position to start taking action but money talks right now and uh, the Lord God says that we will lend and not borrow. So he's opening up the floodgates of heaven, but he's not going to open them up to us until we come together. Right now we have to unite. Okay, we have to come together all across the board, all over Africa, unite. We have social media. We have groups like WhatsApp coming through, break off and branch off into new groups, into separate groups and come up with your groups. If you're in America, wherever you're at and you're uh, a children of Israel and you're an Israelite in America, you need to come together. We need to come together like minded individuals because in the, in the, in the Red book of Revelations, it says one hundred and forty four thousand from all the tribes of the children of Israel. So whoever you are, you're a tribe. So whoever you are, we don't need, we, we know that there's 12 tribes. We may not know who we are based on these tribes. We may not, we not know, but many are called, few are chosen. You will know the Lord's voice when you have been called to these prophetic times to be one of the 144,000 and to be sealed. Once again, that seal is the passport. We have to have passports and visas, expedited passports and visas, so we can travel all throughout the continent of Africa, spreading love, building the new Jerusalem, and preaching the word of God. That's who it is, chaste men of God. Not scholars, not arrogance, not uh, through pride, but through, humili through humility and meekness. Uh, and we use the double-edged sword, and we're going to use the word of God and not just speaking from our own understanding we don't need any other books any other doctrines we're going to go out the word of god our history is in here we can start with ezekiel chapter 16. you don't need to go out to any other uh sources we know who we are let's focus on moving forward and building the new jerusalem you know who you are you say you're a hebrew israelite you say you're a child of israel you say you're a child of god you say who you you know who you are then you also know that there's a new Jerusalem. There's a such thing as a new Jerusalem and there is a such thing as a covenant that God has with the children of Israel. And this doesn't uh, disinclude the Gentiles and the multitudes because you're not this in, in included. This is not a race thing. This is not a, 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 a this is not a race thing. This is a covenant. This is a tribal thing. This is a, a God's people thing. This is a God's creation thing. This is him. This is his word. So take that up with God on why he chose to choose uh, 12 tribes of Israel to have a covenant with. Why he did that with us since Ezekiel chapter 16. And it breaks down our whole, uh, everything about us, the children of Israel.
Um, so uh, don't feel if you're a Gentile, which is Caucasian, if you're a Jew, your synagogue of Satan, whoever you are, Greek, Jew, uh, whoever you are, okay? Uh, there you will be, uh, you, after I behold in, in, in Revelations chapter 7, uh, verse 9, after this, after we're sealed, then here you come, the multitude. You're going to see what's going on. You're going to see what the Lord is doing through us, through the children of Israel. You're going to see that covenant being fulfilled because not only uh, is the deception and the veil being removed from the children of Israel, from African Americans that you call us, it's also being removed from the Gentiles. You can hear it in the music. You can hear it in the songs that these are our Gentile brothers and sisters. They're crying out to forgiveness for what they did to our Messiah what they did to us, to our ancestors. So although we might not have government and, and, and politics in the U.S. and, and, and you know, England and, and all in Portugal and, and all of these other countries, Spain, that were involved with slavery, even though they not, may not be apologizing, if you listen to the music, there is a new song being sung right now. If you listen carefully to the gospel music that's being sung right now, even the Christian rap, um, uh, we had another one, a beautiful thing that I've been just in awestruck of lately uh, is is uh, our brothers and sisters, our excellencies and, and our leaders in Africa, on the continent of Africa. They uh, apologized. They gave a public apology for selling Africans into slavery and selling African Americans into slavery, selling us into slavery. So that's prophetic there because uh, it speaks of that in the word of God. Uh, that these are prophetic times that we're living in, beloved, and and just glory to God for His truth and His mysteries being revealed through His prophets. Glory to God. Keep it coming. Keep preaching. Keep teaching the Word of God. Stop tickling ears. Stop these prosperity gospels. Stop it. These are the last days. These are end times that we're living in, and uh, these are the prophetic times that we're living in. I'm just gonna say that. I don't wanna say that these are end times. These are prophetic times that we're living in because the prophet, the Word of God is prophetic. So take heed. He who has an ear, let him hear. Um, let's build. Let's grow. Keep your eyes and ears open. Be receptive to the Holy Spirit. Allow him to lead you, guide you, and strengthen you. Ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ask God about the new Jerusalem. Ask him to reveal these things to you. Ask him to reveal his mysteries to you. Ask him for the gift to prophesy. Ask him for these gifts. Ask and you shall receive. Jesus is knocking right now. He's knocking at the door right now. He's right there at the door. He's just waiting for you to turn that knob and let him in. These are prophetic times that we're living in. And when I say beloved, that is a, a term of endearment in the Bible that Jesus, that the disciples use, brethren, beloved. They use these words. They didn't say bro, bruh, dude, homie. We need to stop using these low vibrational terms to uh, address each other, nigga, and all of these words. I'm listening to you prophets and these 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 people on on YouTube and they're and, and I'm starting to watch your elevation and I'm starting to watch you uh, become lukewarm and forget your first love. Trend the genius for one, my brother Trend. I watch you, bro, hey, brother, uh, beloved. I watch you, and uh, I just want you to just please be mindful of the messages that we are sharing in our language, our verbiage that we're using. We don't need to curse. We don't need to use nigga. We don't need to use these colloquialisms. We need to speak articulately, educated, and with with and with like we're educated. We're too. We have too much wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to speaking low vibrational. Uh, with, uh, with our tongue is very powerful. So watch what we say with our tongue. There's no excuse. There's no justifying it. I'm holding you accountable. I'm holding everybody accountable, right now. Because you say that you believe in Jesus Christ, you say you believe in the word of God and you're reading the Bible and you're studying the word and you're sharing these prophetic messages. But let me see something else. Let me hear another prophetic message. Let me hear the prophetic word of God that pertains to today. Not tickling people's ears. Glory to God. So uh, this was just a little voice note I wanted to share with you guys, a, a video note I wanted to share with you all. Oh, uh, praise God, it just came to me, the Holy Spirit just uh, reminded me of what I initially wanted to share with you all. So I have, uh, you know, we have uh, an idea because I'm not the only one and the Lord confirmed that uh, this is a prophetic 
word and that this is a vision, that this is something that the Lord God wants to do. And it revolves around passports. Right now, there's a petition going on, uh, uh, a petition that an individual created, not any uh, government entity or any nonprofit or any charity, but uh, a scholar, uh, a Hebrew scholar. He's in Ghana right now uh, studying abroad, and he created a petition uh, for passports for uh, passports for African Americans for the children of Israel specifically the verb the word is the children of Israel because that's who we are the US knows that everybody knows that God knows it that we're the children of Israel and so he was uh, writing a petition which was to confirm the letter that I wrote to Joe Biden regarding uh, expedited and waived passports so uh, I was suggesting and demanding actually uh, to Joe Biden, which I noticed that there's been a lot of distractions and rhetoric and everything they're tap dancing around uh, Africa, but the US better take heed Babylon better take heed because Africa is making some very strong alliances right now that are very prophetic and uh, the US and uh, her citizens should take heed to it if you're a Christian if you're a, a believer in Jesus Christ and you read the Bible then you should know that these are prophetic times we live in so I have a cousin also, so we're talking about uh, rep we're talking about passports, reparations, that they're saying that we will never get reparations. We're talking about the USD being dissolved, uh, but we need to hold the US accountable for the USD and make sure that they don't get rid of that USD before we are paid reparations. Because if it wasn't for our gold and uh, the currency and what we built as the slaves, uh, our ancestors built here in the United States of America, there would be no USD uh, to back that. So it was built upon, you know, our backs, uh, our ancestors, hard work and labor, free labor. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to advocate and we're going to push the line. And we're going to really uh, push the line for our reparations. Uh, and expedited passports and for our prisoners we need to have a system in line and system in place uh, for our prisoners that are coming home from prison our african-american brothers and sisters the children of israel to come with us to africa to come into african custody along with uh you know because you get gate money when you were released from prison they give you two hundred dollars funds now we have people that have been down for years and years and years that are certified there they do they know how to do dairy they know how to do farming agriculture because they learned these various skills while incarcerated and in prison it would be a great opportunity to allow these brothers and sisters to come home with the expedited passport and universal visas uh, along with maybe about five thousand dollars that the government can pay to uh, for a specific group, maybe not everybody. We, we can start a pilot program where we can uh, have blueprints and sketches and designs to build the community and have the inmates coming home and building a community uh, for the diaspora that you call for the children of Israel with the funds. The funds would be specifically allocated to purchase land, to buy materials, and to uh, build over there on the continent of Africa in a new city uh, that is undisclosed, that we have yet to uh, disclose yet. So there's plenty of land so we could do that. Uh, we could build uh, we're also talking about ownership of uh, a welcome centers. I've talked with various diaspora brothers and sisters, children of Israel here. We're talking about building welcoming welcome centers and hotels uh, uh, in an undisclosed location where a welcoming center, a, 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 a home base where we can go, a first place that we can go to get all of the tools and resources that we need to branch out. Uh, a welcome center where we have everything. Uh, I was talking to uh, the Repat group and we were talking about uh, there's a lot of chefs. We have business professionals. We have clothing designers. So we have everybody that we need on site. We have educators. So we can, when we bring our children over, they have education. Uh, they will be able to get the schooling and the knowledge and education on ag agriculture, farming, uh, animal husbandry, on uh, the languages, the various languages throughout the continent because we need to have one place that we can go to first to get what we need, the tools and resources that we need to branch out. So this would be great for inmates uh, that are incarcerated, that are currently coming home because they need opportunities. We need building, we need to build. We need a place for us. This is our home. Africa is our home. That's where we belong. African-American children of Israel, that's where we belong. Joe Biden, 
Everybody doesn't want to talk to you. Nobody wants to write to you. Nobody wants to reach out to you. They think you're a puppet. They don't believe that you have our best interests at heart. Your agenda is everywhere else. But President Biden, Kamala Harris, we need you to pay attention and hone in on the African Americans and hone in on the children of Israel and hone in on Africa. Please, Joe Biden, stop trying to go to Africa without us. You can't get, America cannot get into Africa without the African Americans. They're done with you, the West. Africa is, is done with the West. They're done with the lies. They're done with the colonialism. They're done with it. The truth is being revealed right now as we speak, and Africa is rising up. So take heed to what's going on right now. You can't beat us, so the only way, to, to the thing to do is to join us. And this goes for our Latino brothers and sisters too. We know what's going on with the Latino brother uh, community, the Mexican American community, the Central American community, the come on, the South American community. We know what's going on. We know who they are as well. They're also very unspoken for. They're un they're an unspoken for community. Why? Because of immigration. Nobody wants to speak up for them. They just do it. They just do the work. The Mexicans, they do the work. They do what they need to do. Somehow, some way, they are blessed with that grace. And not to put them on a pedestal. We're equals. We're the children of Israel. We're cousins. We're brothers and sisters. We all came from the same place, which is Africa, the continent of Africa that they call right now. But it's really Jerusalem. It's Israel. It's all of that. We are children of God, Mexicans, blacks that you call, Dominicans, uh, Puerto Ricans, Cubans. We're the children of Israel. Spread all out throughout the nations. And now it's time for us to come together, Spanish, English, all of these different uh, languages and these tongues, all the various tongues. Now we have translators, we have translating apps so we can understand, we can communicate, we can worship together. And we can have uh, our, our, our languages, uh, of the Bible and the word of God translated in every single language. So there's no excuse for us not to be able to unite now. We can't say that there's a culture, uh, a, a, a cultural gap anymore. We can't say that, that we can't bridge the gap anymore because we have everything in the palm of our hands right now with the internet, with social media, with tablets, with our iPhones, with our Google, with our Androids and the cloud. We have everything we need to come together right now. So we need to bring our brothers and sisters from Mexico that are coming here, immigrating to the U.S., to their land that was originally theirs, that they're coming to for better opportunities. And we need to be able to coordinate with them and cross train in Africa on construction and agriculture and farming. Because Mexico has a lot in common with Africa. If you go to Mexico, if you talk to Mexicans, if you go into Jalisco, if you go into Guadalajara, if you go into Baja, if you go into these various uh, countries in Mexico, they're built, they use the same materials, they, they, use, they, they're, they're, they use the same strategies, they farm the same animals, they farm the same crops, and, and they're exporting and importing to the U.S. They're selling oranges, apples, they're selling... Uh, fruits and vegetables. They're selling things here. We're importing and exporting Africa and and Mexico We need to all be able to import and export people trade skills Take heed brothers and sisters. There are certain people that are more skilled in other areas And we will pay them to help us build we will pay them we'll work side by side and it's not always about money because right now we have all the tools, gifts, and talents, gifts, and resources to make it happen to where money is not an issue. Let's stop talking, beloved, and let's make it happen. This is my public service announcement. This is my challenge to you all. Leave me a comment below. I'm going to leave my email address. It's West Coast Rise Ministries at gmail.com. That's West Coast Rise Ministries at gmail.com. My name is Minister Yeshua Sampson. I'm the CEO and founder. I started this nonprofit 501c3 right here on the West Coast. It wasn't to get money or pill for money or siphon money from the community. It was to get government grants and funding. But now I'm bypassing them. I don't know if I want to get grants and funding now. But when the time and opportunity presents itself, I will apply for grants and funding. I'm looking for grants right now for Africa, for agriculture, for farming. But do I want to really get involved with NGOs and nonprofits? Why? 
I see all these NGOs and these nonprofits and you know who's running these organizations and these these ministries and these churches that are coming in and they're coming in and they're exploiting the land. They're doing these church services and they're in and out. Artists as well, they're in and out. You do a little bit of help, you do a little bit of this, here you go. It's time to stay, stay boots on the ground and keep building and stay consistent. If we're going to go there and preach the word of God, we're going to preach the word, the truth. We're going to preach the truth right now and building the new Jerusalem. We're not going to keep preaching these watered down messages. We're going to preach the new Jerusalem and how we're going to build the kingdom of God. We're going to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. We're not going to keep learning these old colonialistic ways. We're going to do it by the grace and word of God and use our prophecy. And everybody stop trying to be a leader. Everybody stop trying to run things and stop talking too much because sometimes we know too much. Sometimes you can know too much and you can scare people away with what you know. And then it's too competitive. Why are we competing with each other? It's I know that to he who competes, you know, uh, competes to win the crown. I understand that we're all racing to win a crown right now, but it's the crown of righteousness, it's the crown of God, it's the, it's the glory of God. That's what we're competing for. We're not competing against each other. We're competing to get to heaven. We're competing to build the kingdom of, of God. We're competing to seek the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. We're competing to love thy neighbor. Compete to show me how much you can love your neighbor and love the next man more than yourself. Compete to show me that. Compete to show me what you're willing to sacrifice and give up to, to for the greater good. Show me that. I wanna see some action. I sold my car, I sold everything. I don't have any obligations, nothing right now. I'm ready to go. It's just some things that are just, I'm waiting for the Lord to move because I'm not gonna move without him telling me to go. But right now he's prepared me, he's got me ready and I'm coming back and I'm telling everybody what it is and what time it is and what time we're living in. The times we're living in, they're prophetic times. I really don't want to leave without you, but I will if I have to. And I will, I am going to. So whether you want to go with me or not and build and start from the ground up, then I'm sorry. I love you, beloved. Let's get this work done, please. In the name of Jesus, let's build this new Jerusalem in Africa. Africa, the new Jerusalem of Africa. In the name of Jesus, he who has an ear may let him hear this message. Shalom. Peace. Asante.